Hey, welcome to my little tutorial on how to shoot smoother gimbal-like shots on your iPhone. So here I'm demonstrating with the iPhone 11. This is the plain vanilla iPhone 11, not the iPhone 11 Pro, but you'll get pretty similar results regardless of which iPhone 11 you use. If you have one of the older iPhones, it's not gonna be as smooth. So iPhone 11 in hand, starting up my POV cam. This is the Insta360 Go, by the way. Great little behind the scenes camera. So I'm gonna open up my app. I'm using the regular camera app. Nothing fancy here not using Filmic Pro or any of those paid apps. And there's a specific reason for this. Those apps are not as good with the stabilization. They increase the overall quality of the video, but the stabilization, not as good. I don't know why, it sucks, but yeah. iPhone app is what it is. So, I've got the app open, and now I'm gonna switch my lens to the 0.5 lens. That's the wide lens, super wide lens. You get great stabilization with both lenses. Actually, the normal lens is even better, but the 0.5 just looks more cinematic to me, especially when I put the black letterbox bars on the top and the bottom. The next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna lock my exposure. By default, the iPhone will expose everything very bright, and if you're in a slightly low light situation like we're in here, that means it's gonna slow down the shutter. And if the shutter's slow, it's not gonna be as stable. So all I have to do is point it towards something bright, let it compensate, and then lock it off by pressing my finger against the screen for a while. That's even too bright, so I'm gonna lower this even more, which means to drag my finger down like that. Okay. One more very important thing, I'm not holding my phone like this. If you're trying to make it look cinematic, shoot horizontally. <laughs> Movies are not vertical. Now, if you want a cinematic Snapchat or whatever, fine, shoot vertically. But for all my demonstrations today, I'm gonna to hold horizontally. So I'm gonna position my body properly to walk smoothly with the iPhone. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm putting this hand in the middle of the phone, not on the side, in the middle. This hand is gonna sort of help to guide from beneath. Now the next thing that's really important here is bending the knees and walking with your shoulders level. So that means instead of walking like this, I'm gonna walk more like this, okay? So knees bent, and we're just gonna glide forward and keep the shoulders flat. Let's give it a try. What if I wanna walk backwards? Well, I can just walk like this. That will look pretty smooth. But you run into one little problem. If you're not watching where you're going, you're gonna hit something, maybe hurt yourself. So one thing you can do is just shift your body position and grip the phone like this. Make sure your fingers aren't in the shot. Just grip your phone like that. And then walk forward. Okay, so those are some basic walking shots. Now let's try adding a twist. It can be a lot of fun to tilt your horizon as you move. You can do sort of a vortex kind of shot just by twisting your wrists a bit as you shoot. The most important part of doing any movement with your iPhone is that you keep the speed of the movement constant. So if you're walking forward, you wanna be walking at a constant rate. If you're rotating your iPhone, you wanna rotate at a constant rate. We'll try a push forward, tilt up. This here, this hand here, pushing forward and tilting up. I'm moving forward at a constant rate, tilting up at a constant rate. Now I'll do it the wrong way. I won't keep a constant rate. And my tilt up and my push forward won't be perfectly synchronized. Let's see how that looks.
Now to answer a few frequently asked questions about the iPhone, first of all, why am I not using a gimbal? Well, in my logic, if I put a gimbal on this thing, it's gonna be about as big as a regular camera. And given that a phone's image is not really as good as a regular camera's image most of the time, there's really no reason for me to add bulk to this because I might as well just bring a regular camera if I'm gonna make this too big to fit in my pocket. So that's why I don't use a gimbal at all with the iPhone. Second frequently asked question, what do you do about low light? Well, again, this is just a situation of avoidance. The iPhone's never gonna be very good in low light. The wide angle lens is even worse in low light than the normal lens. So my advice there would be, number one, don't use the wide angle lens if it's too dark. And if you have the iPhone 11 Pro, I believe the telephoto lens is also bad in low light. So you wanna just stick to the main lens. And my other piece of advice for shooting in low light, just don't let the phone expose automatically because it's gonna to try to overexpose everything and make it too bright. So just lock that exposure and then drag it down a bit so that you recover your highlights a bit and you crush the noisy, shadowy stuff into black. And that's about as good as you're gonna get. And the third frequently asked question, what about shooting in log? Well, I don't shoot in log because the camera app doesn't allow it. If I was going for a kind of shot that didn't require stabilization, then I would switch over to Filmic Pro or some app that lets me manually control stuff better, and then I might try out a log profile. But probably I wouldn't even use log in that kind of a scenario because it's not a 10-bit image, it's only an 8-bit image. And chances are, in most scenarios, you're gonna be shooting at sort of a high ISO with a phone because it's not very good in low light, which means your log image is just gonna be really noisy. And from what I've seen, most iPhone videos shot in log don't look any better than videos shot without it. What do you do about lens flares? So iPhone's lens flares are really awful. Some people told me to get the Moment anamorphic lens, which might be a solution. I don't have it. From what I've heard though, the Moment lens messes up the stabilization of the camera. So it's kind of an either or thing. Either you add the Moment lens and you lose the stabilization or you use the stabilization just in the Moment app, which is not quite as good, or you work without the Moment lens. Really my only advice for dealing with lens flare on an iPhone is to avoid it. There's two ways to avoid it. One, you change your lighting. So instead of shooting at an angle where you're gonna get a lot of reflections and stuff from the sun, you just move a little bit so you don't get those reflections. The second thing you should do is just keep your lens clean. Like I wipe it on my shirt. You're probably supposed to use a lens cloth, but I just wipe it on my shirt right before each shot. Try not to get fingerprints on it. And that's about all my advice for lens flare. Okay, so those are my tips for now for the iPhone. Get out there, get creative, try some shots that you wouldn't be able to do if you had it on a gimbal or on any other sort of stabilizer. Okay, have fun. See you in the next video.